G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, the weather report. <laughs> look at the last few days, look, it's been quite hot and muggy and, and the lawn's been growing like anything, yet um, last night when I went to bed, there was a few storms were going through to the north of us. We didn't get any rain out of it at all. The dams are still about where they were. There's, nothing's changed there. Um, but yeah, with the um, um, storms, there was quite a bit of humidity and we were watching on the weather, there's a, the, there's a um, bit of a cold front coming up. Well, it hit this morning. And look, it's lovely. It's just a nice, fresh breeze. And look, it's just refreshing um, compared with the heat and the humidity that we've had for so long here now for over the summer break. So um, I was fine. Yeah, when, I, when you get a couple of cool days, it gives you a burst of energy. So that was a good thing. Um, we're expecting 16 to 27 today. 49% uh, humidity, so um, the air is starting to dry out, and it's yeah, look, it's just great. Um, th this is really good weather for doing stuff. You, you actually feel like doing things. Yeah, you um, sometimes in the hot and the humidity. As soon as you move around, like last weekend, I was filming the front end and the kingpins and that, and I had sweat just pouring off me. The, uh, I had a light shirt on, you could see all the sweat. <laughs> I thought, oh, I better not do that. So anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the Website for the uh, merchandise, it's going well. Um, we're getting through a few shirts and stubby coolers and things like that. We're, and look, it all helps. Um, PayPal's holding up all the money. They're still not giving it to us, but that's fine. Um, you know, we sort of we sort of did it just to help support the channel a bit, just so we can um, go a few other directions. So, well, not other directions so much. We can just buy more gear, really. So um, we'll see how we go. Um, through the week had a yarn to Sparex, um, James our rep, um, he's a good rep and um, I was sort of, every month I, I put a parts order in for what I think I'm going to be doing the next month and we try and keep it in small bits just to, just to keep it chugging along nicely, no big deals and um, so far for the 23C engine, um, we've got the engine kit there, we've got the timing chains the tensioner, we've got the fuel pump, lift pump, oil pump. Oh, fuel pump, lift pump, same thing. Um, oil pump and um, water pump sitting there the other day for it. And um, James got together a kit for the clutch. The clutch kits, um, if you just want to buy a clutch plate or something for a 23C with a dual stage clutch, they're about, but they're not in the kit. They have to build the kit. So um, the kit turned up for that. Um, the 65 that I bought off Neville, off me mate Paulie's brother, um, a while ago. Remember, I bought a 65 with a rooted engine. Well, they were telling me that the hydraulic pump in there, they pulled the side covers off, and the hydraulic pump had blown apart. And they just pulled the bits out, and when they kept slashing, they just tied the slasher to a set height um, on the off the roll frame, off the bar, up the top, sort of thing. So. Um, so we knew the pump was buggered. So we've got one of them sitting there for the 65, which is a job we need to do one day, no hurry. And um, we got the talking about, like at the moment, parts supply is a bit of a, um, is a, bit of a thing I'm finding. Yeah, you, know, you want to go one direction and sometimes you can't, you've got to head back to the other. Um, but look, that, that's just life, I suppose. That's these times we live in. So... Um, so with the TEA20 here, the, the project that we've been doing, um, I've got all the, the, the front axle here. Yep, and you can see that. Um, the front axle here, I got that washer made last weekend. And that's the washer there. I've just had this out on the anvil and I've, I've smacked this straight because it was a bit of up and down there. So I've got the washer to go into there, so it's over on the welding bench here, ready to um, have that, have this pin bolted in firmly, and then we'll run a couple of welds around that spacer there, just to take the slop out of that bush. And I also have another front axle from another wreck I bought one time, it, and look, it's pretty good, but what we're going to do here is, on all of these, and I'll probably do it this stew, um, when, when we look at the brackets here, where the nuts sit for the bonnet pivoting up, on every Fergie they're broken off. So 
what we've gone and done through the week is we've gone and bought a, an 11 16th UNF nut and that fits the S555 bonnet pivot bolt. So the idea is that we that we just tidy up. I, I got to grind all the, the, they usually have a little tin retainer sort of thing there to hold the nut in and that helps it self-centralise. But look, we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to bolt this through, um, bolt it through with the Spar X S555 nut and we're going to tack this nut inside, so it's not going to be floating or anything like that. It's just going to be fixed. The, uh, the original nuts couldn't float much anyway, so we'll be doing that in the stew, um, a bit later on in the stew anyway. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just get that ready. Then that front axle can bolt on, or this front bolster can bolt on the TEA20. Um, as you know, I put the two videos out last week with the wheel bearings and the king pins and I'm still getting a front axle beam sorted. Um, I have one that I thought I'd be able to use but over the time someone's got two of the hardened bushes for the 35 and they've brought them into the housing and it must have been slopped out a lot and they've welded them in and when I took the um, took this spare axle I thought I had up to the mill um, and you know did a file test seeing how hard it was it was quite hard so um, uh, what I may do is try and grind that um, grind all the weld off the top if I can and bash those bushes out and then see if we can machine that out so the front axle is going to be a little bit slower than I'd hoped um, not to worry it doesn't matter <laughs> we'll get there okay um, but yeah through the week we'll we'll sort that um, a job I've been doing through this last week is on your TE20 PDO seal, and this is the rear PDO seal, um, there's a wear sleeve on them and, and we make these, I, I actually make them all um, on my lathe and that's what I'm doing when I'm doing nothing. And um, I make these things and I did a little run, I buggered them up, so I, had to, oh, I buggered four up, so anyway, just... Um, yeah, I had my measurement in my head wrong. I, I had the plan there, I just had to look up and read the bloody thing, but for some reason I had it in my head, um, what I thought it was, and I, yeah, so anyway, I scrapped four of them, which is only this much stock, so just a pain in the ass doing it, eh, really? <laughs> so, um, so, I've been making a, oh, a stack of these. I've got about seven or eight of them at work in stock now, and through the afternoon this next week, I'll make some more and we're going to fit on the TEA20, we're going to fit the leather seal. Um, now, the leather seal on a TEA20, you can buy either a leather seal or a neoprene seal. Um, the neoprene's a more modern type of seal. And look, it is far easier to fit. These seals, um, they're a Sparex number. I can't give you the number off the top of my head, but these leather seals, I find I've got to soak them in a bit of oil to get them... Um, and they've actually got the proper felt. And, and look, for original seal, they're the duck's nuts, but they're just a bit harder to fit. Um, if you want on your T20, you just want to fit a seal to stop the PTO leak. And the, the other option, the, um, the neoprene one, the more modern type, the lip seal, is probably the better way to go. But anyway, I'm going to fit this on this one just to do it. And the PTO spline on the TEA20 is quite worn. And... Um, yeah, I don't, well, well, these old tractors, you never know what they've done in their lifetime. But um, the other day, Grumpy Dave, my neighbour, was getting rid of rubbish and, oh, get this bloody thing out of my way. And so it's a, it's a TEA, or it's a TE20 PDO shaft. And look, the splines look good at this end there. Sometimes if you try and get your PDO out and it won't come out, the PDO shaft is or the PDO, the slasher, if it's had a topper or a slasher on it, it's hit something without a clutch and the, or the clutch is rusted solid and it twists these shafts and they get twisted down here. And I can't... Usually you can see the witness marker where the pump runs. Probably here, I'd say. Uh, what happens this end here, down the, the front end of the shaft, it twists and you try and get that PDO shaft out. Well, what a prick of a job. Um, I've had people pull the top cover off and get down in there with a saw and saw them off to get them out. They are just a bastard of a thing. And, um, and 
of course, if you go to do your hydraulic pump, um, you've got to have your PDO shaft out because it goes up into the centre of your pump. So that's why you, know, you have your PDO drive up here and you've got to engage your PDO to get your hydraulics working. So your PDO drives and then your pump drives back here. So they can be a bugger. Um, but he's given me this and look, it, it looks ratty enough to suit the tractor and the PDO spline on it's really good. Um, looks like it's done very little, if any, work. The bearing seized solid. We don't care. Um, we've got all that there. Um, the last weekend with the stew, um, or not with the stew, with the video doing the kingpins and all that, um, I got a request on the Bundy Bears Shed Facebook page. Could I show what the ream's like? Even though we didn't need to ream the bush, um, show what it's like. So. Um, I told them I'd put a photo up of it, and I probably will, but I'll probably put a message to come and watch this stew. So, this is an adjustable ream. Now, these are made by hand, or turned by hand, I should say, and that's the, that's the ream. Now, this one does from inch and 3 16th to inch and 11 32. So, this is this does inch and a quarter, but it's just it's right on its limits. And now, how these work is you can see a piece of thread here and a piece of thread here. Now, these blades are tapered, so when you loosen this nut here with the two flats, you loosen that and bring it down, and you bring this nut down, it actually gets narrower and narrower, and, and it cuts less. Then, when you need to come out, you want all the blades here, the six blades, to go out fatter, you open this up and you bring this up and the advantage of this ream is that you can just take a tiny sliver and then you can do it again, you know, just open him up a bit more and do it again. Now, this piece here down the bottom end, that's just a guide, nothing more, um, nothing less. You can um, run this right up to the nut there and this taper here, this taper goes into the bottom bush or into the other bush. If you have a top and a bottom bush, say, um, and you're wanting to do the top bush, well, you bring this guide up in like that. And you can actually bring it. No, it's got to come this way. And um, so this fella here, that that taper there you'll notice it's a very gentle taper that goes up into the bottom bush and away you go turning the ream here and this whole thing turns within that within that bush and so that way you can centralize it to the bottom bush you can turn this by hand with, with a tap handle and try and get even force now you flood these with oil you get your oil can and you put a lot of oil around them and you never turn them backwards, you only go forwards. Now, I have another ream, um, the spiral hand reams. They're a bit easier to use sometimes, but um, reaming, reaming those bushes can be an absolute bugger of a job. So, um, but uh, the, the main thing, yeah, and look, the, the cheaper ones you can buy, I see some on eBay made in India and things like that. Um, I haven't used them, but I hear they're okay. So. That's up to you, I suppose, so which way you'd like to go. Um, yeah, if you'd like to head that way or not. <laughs> Who knows? Um, we're probably going to do a little video today on fitting the Sparex S43583. And this is where the bonnet goes down onto the dash. That's what the old rubber looks like. And it's, it's just about mostly, well, a fair bit of it missing. So Sparex bring out this little kit and it's a new rubber to go over the edge. So when the bonnet comes down, it sits, um, the bonnet sits down on a rubber, not um, rubbing on the rivets that are there because the, the, um, the rubber's gone. So um, I'm hoping to do a quick video on that today. It's just a little job needs to be done. And I thought, well, we got the part here. We may as well just show people how to fit it. It's not too hard. Um, actually, it's about as easy as a job can get, really. Um, but, yeah, so we'll, that'll, hopefully I'll get that filmed today. 
So, well, it's Monday morning now, and over this, um, over this last weekend, um, a young fella, you know, a young fella got married oh, three or four weeks ago, a month ago, whatever it was. And um, anyway, some of the people we met at the wedding were Ellie's um, side of the family, and um, yeah, look, they seem a great crew. And anyway, a couple of them were coming up from Brisbane and um, they spend the weekend with Tim and Ellie, and so... Um, they said, oh, we might have a barbecue, eh? And I said, yeah, all right. So we thought we'd um, have a barbecue out here. And so, yeah, Saturday I slashed all the paddock. I'll take it for a quick walk out there just to, just to show you that I haven't been sitting on my ass. Well, I was. I was on a tractor sitting on my ass. But um, um, I slashed the paddock, and, and I slashed the paddock because it was getting long so the kids could ride motorbikes. And we took Goldie up, and um, the kids could hop on that and bug around and... and um, yeah, had a great time. A Saturday I spent all day doing that. Um, through the week last week, every afternoon I was making PDO bushes. And um, yesterday, it's only a fortnight before we go away with the Land Cruiser. And um, so yesterday I finished putting the shovel rack up. I've got that up on there now. And the Max Tracks, or your safety treads. I, I just use treads. I bought them years ago. And um, I've got two sets and I'm just putting the old faded set up there because it just sits out in the sun and the trip we're doing up through um, Barcaldon, Ilfracombe, um, Aramac, Mutterborough, Juliet Creek, um, Richmond, Hewenden, all those places, they're just country towns and, and we're not expecting any um, heavy four-wheel driving but um, you never know. Um, but I, I just look it's no burden to carry them, so I've, I've mounted the brackets on the roof and um, I've just got to get a couple of little padlocks to put on it so they can't get nicked. And um, yeah, so we'll have, I've done that, that was yesterday, uh, <laughs> at the barbecue Saturday night, well, we had a great time and, and Tim and I got this thing now and then we'd buy a cigar each and we'd sit down and have a cigar and um, Lisa, uh, one of the friends, um, I think she's Ellie's mum's cousin or something. Yeah, she brought up a couple of cigars for us fellas, so we sat out and had a cigar. And, um, and, but yeah, by the time the oldies went home, like all, all the oldies came and, and there, was, um, there was only Tim and myself, blokes, all the rest were ladies, and it was about 14, I think, or something like that. And um, there was a couple of little kids, young Arrow and, and um, Zoya. And, um, anyway, look, we had a great time and um, had a bit of a barbie and... and um, Stayed up till quarter past 12 though, so yesterday morning, Sunday morning, I didn't hop up till, oh look, I think it was quarter past six, something like that, had a big sleep in. And, um, and, and that sounds odd I suppose, but normally it's five o'clock, we're out of bed, and um, now and then we can have a sleep in till quarter past half past six, but it doesn't happen often. And, um, but yeah, yesterday I sat around a bit and had a, um, had a coffee and a, yeah, just a yarn and um, then I went out and worked on the ute for the day, and um, yeah, mum, my mum, she came around yesterday for a yarn and um, spent an hour or two just having a chat. And just um, yeah, she's still unloading stuff. Do you want this? Do you want that? And I'm getting rid of stuff. And so, <laughs> anyway, um, she brings it all out here, and some of it we send home with us. So, no, we don't want that bloody rubbish. But um, anyway, um, she's doing little dolls for something. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure what. She's probably told me, but I probably haven't been listening. <laughs> but um, her and her friends are making these little dolls for charity, and, and so that's keeping her quite busy, which is a good thing. And, um, the, um, but yeah, it's only two weeks. It's the 24th of this month that we're hitting the road with the Land Cruiser. Um, so it's going into tomorrow, Tuesday. It's going into ARB, and we're getting the, uh, the Air Max. It's a Safari Armac. I don't know whether we should say Armac or Airmac, um, but it's getting a big um, the um, snorkel on it. The, it's got a raised air intake, comes up the windscreen there. The standard one's got like a bird feeder looking thing on it. So um, we're getting that chucked away because it's got leaks halfway. So um, we're not planning on going through deep water, but it's just uh, the way I figure is if you've got a little air cleaner and you're looking for a raised air inlet and you've got all these gaps along the way, well, What's the bloody point of that? But anyway, so it's going into TG, um, going into ARB on Tuesday, tomorrow, to get the snorkel done. Um, I'm not sure if they've got the new winch to pop in yet. We had a worn winch that 
didn't work straight out of the box. Um, so yeah, who knows? <laughs> and um, I was talking to Ron in there the other day, and we we're talking about raised air in um, raised breathers on the dips and the transfer case because uh, um, you, you can go through about 800 mils of water, which is two and a half feet of water with them. But um, you're not supposed to. But um, you do a few river crossings and things like that. But um, We've decided to put all the inlets, all the breathers for the diff and the transfer case up nice and high and protected. So um, when you drive along, the, and look, ideally you drive along and you, you pull up and let things cool down before you go through the water. But um, pulling up for five or 10 or 15 minutes for a cuppa isn't going to cool a diff down. That's just done 500 kilometres or 200 kilometres or 100 kilometres. And... Um, so yeah, so when you when you do go through a bit of water that's over the axle and all that, just to have a um, as it contracts, it sort of sucks a bit of moisture in, and and, and if there's or sucks a bit of air in, I suppose, um, and so when it does that, you don't want that to be damp air. So um, so we're just putting them on, just a, another thing to do with it. Um, but yeah, it's getting close now. We're starting to get pretty keen. Jude and I are starting to get a bit excited. It's not far away. I've, I've got the bed made in the back now. Um, we've got all the hat rack all finished that I wanted to do and um, just for our Akubra hats. You don't see me wear one much, but I've got proper Akubra hats. And um, I used to wear them all the time as a younger bloke, but when I was a mechanic and I found these hats, these caps were better because you can stick your head in under, then you could, you know, when you wanted to get in under a header or a harvester, you put your cap on backwards and look, you look trendy, eh? <laughs> but this bit back here, when you're in working on the harvester, a, a, um, a header, um, a grain header, and you're changing bearings and that, by putting your hat on backwards, you could actually see what you were doing out here without the peak, because you're, you're often in under something, but then all the, all the prickly shit didn't fall down the back of your shirt. But, um, but what we did with that was um, um, we used to take talcum powder with us, and before we... Um, before we jumped under a cane harvester or a, I didn't, I tried not to do cane harvesters much, but before we, um, before we hopped under a, a header, we'd often have talcum powder and we'd pop talcum powder around our neck and um, on our arms and that, and that stopped all the little prickly stuff from the wheat and all that sort of thing, getting into your skin and making you itchy. Um, a bit of talcum powder filled the pores of your skin up for that little period of time. And you smelt beautiful. <laughs> so anyway, okay, look, I'll, um, That'll do for the quick chat. Um, I never seem to have quick chats, do I? Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, the, um, I'll take you outside. I'll just give you a bit of a swing around just to show you what I've done to the ute. Um, we should be able to start doing videos with the ute with our suppliers soon, but um, because parts are hard to find with that and Safari have had trouble getting the, um, getting the snorkels to ARB in Bundaberg and we're still waiting on the scrub bars and the side steps and all that. It's um, because we're waiting on parts. I didn't want it to hit and miss, and oh, you know, we still haven't got this and still haven't got that. And I just wanted to wait till it was finished, then run through all the companies. Um, just give them a bit of a plug for nothing, really. Yeah, we've bought everything. Um, ARB have helped us with some nice pricing on the Ute, uh, but I've bought everything. Um, yeah, nothing's free, and um, so that's uh, and that's nice of them to help out. And I'll get on with some great in there. And they're close to the shop and. Um, it works real well. So, so look, thanks for dropping by, everyone. Um, stay tuned. There'll be a bit of a video at the end of... I'll just probably film welding one nut in and tidying it up, and I'll show you out the front. And hopefully today I can get a video on this PDO shaft done, um, fitting that. Um, I still haven't fitted the oil line. Um, yeah, I, I found a, an old video of the oil line where it went... Um, on the TEA where I was pulling the steering box off and it actually come up along the block and it went over near the steering box but last weekend I just didn't get round to doing that so we'll probably do that. Oh, a little bit more news before I do go. Um, um, talking to James from Sparex, um, um, we are going to pull the hydraulic pump out of that TE20 and the idea is just going to be to show you how to do it um, but Sparex is supplying a full hydraulic pump repair kit, um, which we're going to put run through the pump. So that's interesting. Um, the hydraulics did work, but it's an old tractor, and we're, we're sort of thinking, well, you know, we, 
we're working on this TEA 20, we might as well try and get a bit of good value with it sort of thing. And, and once we get it up and running, we're going to shot it down again and um, we're going to fit a clutch to it. So once we get the tractor all together and finished, um, we've got the clutch coming, we're going to split the TEA, we're going to do the clutch, um, probably do the front gearbox seal, I'd say, while we're there. And we're going to try and fit a rear engine seal. Now, a rear engine seal, when you split a TE20, can be a prick of a thing. They're a, they're a split rubber seal and you put it in. And, and um, we had a call the other day, a bloke bought a Bearco one and he reckoned it was sloppy going in. So um, Sparex have them. I, I prefer Sparex parts. So we'll do that and we'll try and um, do the rope seals down the bottom so um, and it's just not that it particularly needs it it's just going to be good content and I've never shown fitting a clutch on a T20 um, we've never had to um, so yeah that's coming up too but look I'll stop rambling thanks for dropping by everyone have a great week stay tuned for a few videos and we'll catch you next week eh? well there you go that's the paddock all tidied up and this time of year it's good to do the slashing because um, now this cool air has hit we should get a bit of time out of it. Um, I slashed it with the John Deere 1640 there. Now the 1640 um, we shipped it a bit of dirt. I was telling you last week we shipped it a little bit of dirt with it and um, anyway I was talking to a fella and our young grandson was up there playing on it and I didn't notice he left the key on and um, so <laughs> she had a flat battery. Um, the caravan's still here for another week. They told me, don't ring this week, but the week next week, the week we're going away, um, we can probably drop it over there. So that'll be good. But yeah, the paddock's looking lovely. Um, I didn't slash that front corner. It's looking good, but the whole rest here is yeah, really nice. Um, so the daughter, Adele, she's coming to look after the place while we're away. So that should be good for her. Now, if we swing around here and come up there we go there's the shovel holder on the ute and there's the max tracks and the max tracks are just on these mounts you buy for them and you lift them up and away you go um, i've got the aerial there for the phone booster it's on now and i've still got the aerial for the uhf but yeah it's slowly getting um slowly getting organized so yeah it should be Shouldn't be too far away. Okay, on this bush here. Where are we? I'll just take this out. I'm just about set up, ready to go. And this is the bush that I made, or the, the wear sleeve that I made. Now, for MIG welding, you need to clean up around there. So I've, I've ground back any rust and paint and things like that there. So. That should sit in so we can bring the new pin in. I haven't got the bolt up here, so we're just going to hold that down there like that. We should be right. I'll give her a hit. Gas isn't flowing very well. Gas isn't good. I've, I've got a new bottle there, I'll just see. Okay, so that's tacked in. Looks like the gas on me MIG has a blockage or something.
Not good. Hang on. There, that's a bit better. Okay, I might grind a little bit of this away. The little coupler hadn't seeded properly, so... I did a couple of test, test runs on the bench there and it was good, but then um, wiggling it around it can't have been home properly. Okay, we'll try again with that. Now I'll just pop the pin in there just for good measure. And I'll try and come through over those now that the gas problem's fixed. That sounds better, doesn't it? And it looks better. Okay, that's a lot better. Alright, so I will grind them flush later, just so if the axle needs to come forward it can. Now, this little nut here. I've also ground off the... Yeah, you can just see that. I'm flat seeing from well. So I'll pop this bolt and washer in. So that should be good. Can you see there? I've got to have a look in there. Yep, just there. Yep, that's good. So I'll just put a little blast on that. And that should be it. I'll turn the welder off and turn the gas off just for the moment. So yeah, you go, that's the job on the nut. That's the job on the weld. Where are we? Over there. So I'll take the top off these fellas just so they don't stick out past that. Um, I might have to have a quick look at that, um, that coupler. It seems like it, it's got a bit of movement there. So I'll get the other bits done and I'll do this one while I'm going, um, just with the side bolts and we should be okay. Um, and there you go. That's these two. They're all tacked in. Oh, well, they're they welded in so they're captive. We've got the 
the rest there I've ground those down flat again now so that'll hold that little bush in so that's a good solid front axle for us and I've got this one to do so there you go that'll do for a little bit of welding